Sex trafficking is a form of modern slavery, with more than 20 million trafficking victims globally. Over 300,000 humans are victimized yearly in the United States alone. The average age of children taken into sex slavery is 12 to 14. Elizabeth Emeling, founder and CEO of Letitia's House Foundation, is dedicated to helping women and girls trapped and exploited by sex trafficking. With a safe place to stay, medical help, psychological and spiritual counseling, education, and job training, this Christ-centered organization helps women and girls find their way home, changing one life at a time, and changing the world for future generations. Well, joining me now is the executive director and founder of Letitia's House, Elizabeth Aimling. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about Letitia's House. What happens there? Women come who are rescued from the streets. We get referrals from local law enforcement agencies, the FBI, Homeland Security, other wow. local non-government groups. And they come, we say, welcome to Letitia's house, welcome home. Uh, there you get trauma-informed counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I was certified in traumatology from Regent okay. University. Wow. My staff are trained God by... God had a plan. Yes, he sure <laughs> did. Long before we you knew it. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so um, women get trauma-informed counseling. We use the HEART model, which is Dr. Ben Key's model. Um, they get medical care, dental care, wow. GED classes, college training. How do most of these women, we're talking about women, but for a for the majority of them, this doesn't start in their lives when they're women. It starts when they're much younger. How does that happen? Most girls that are trafficked are trafficked as girls, and they're victims of childhood sexual abuse. Over 90% of the residents at our house were abused as children. Wow. And they're trafficked at 12 to 14, which is an average for girls, and 5 to 7 for boys. And so girls are trafficked. They're predated upon because They've been sexualized, and a child that's sexualized is an easy target for a pimp mm -hmm. who uses the same opportunistic things as a predator. So many people might look at a woman who has experienced that as in her childhood and then is now being controlled by a pimp simply as a prostitute and not understand what went into all of that. I mean, nobody does this because they want to. Ab absolutely, that's true. We always say, when we do an interview, we have a psychosocial assessment and we do an interview. And at the end of the interview, we always say, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be? And they say, mom, lawyer, doctor, mm. princess, <laughs> librarian. One said librarian. My mother's a librarian. She was pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Only yes. one, but at least one. Yeah. But no little girl ever says, when I grow up, I want to be a prostitute. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a great misunderstanding. So you've been doing this for four years, and in four years alone, you've seen numbers of women come through the program. And can you just share a couple of testimonies with us? Oh, we have so many. Um, we have an 89% success rate. Amazing. And success for us means women have come to know Christ. They've gotten their GEDs. They've got college. They have skills. They've learned financial literacy. They become independent, contributing members of society. Um, we have so many stories, but there's one, a young girl who came to us at 18. You saw her picture earlier. It was blurred. Uh, she was sexually abused when she was seven. She said, the only thing I'm good at is serving men. Uh, her mom was a drug addict. Her dad was lost to the streets. Uh, she was at Letitia's house for 10 months. She started going to church. She started going to Bible study. She had great trauma counseling. Wow. Anyway, she discovered at a cooking class from a volunteer that she liked to cook, and she was good at it. Well, she got a full scholarship to culinary school, and she graduated last April. Wow. And when she graduated, the chef said, what can I say about C? You put her in the kitchen with the problem, and she finds the answer. Wow. So her wow. life has changed. That's just one. You know, it, it almost seems like one of the things that you're doing, in addition to finding healing from the past, is giving them the freedom to dream. I mean, to, to, to think about what would I like to be, a dream that's been crushed out of them, Absolutely. and they get to start over again. They do. What role does faith play in that? Oh, faith is the underpinning of our house. Yeah. Um, women come and they've been rejected, they've been abused, they've been controlled, they make mistakes at our house, they see unconditional love, they know what grace is firsthand. My staff all love the Lord and they demonstrate that 24-7. Yeah. So faith is an integral part of what we do. You know, I think so often 
places for women who struggled like this or people who struggled with some kind of abuse or, or controlling substance have requirements for, you know, you, you have to do this or have stopped that or accomplished this to bit, but you have a whosoever will may come policy. That, is that never daunting to you? <laughs> Well, it's, it's daunting when we get a psychosocial assessment and I read that somebody's been a heroin addict and they've been trafficked since they were seven. I go, okay, God, you know, but we, we have good counselors in place. We have psychologists, we have great counselors, we have great psychiatrists, we have addiction counselors. So all of those things are in place. So we do this with our eyes wide open. You know, I think for women too, there must be, a, there's so much shame involved in sexual abuse or sexual, um, I guess, just abuse in, in the lives of anybody, man, woman, child. Right. And part of what you, part of the reason that you've seen faces today where they have been blocked out is because of the need to protect people who are coming up and out of this. Absolutely. So that they can have a new beginning. I mean, there we're looking at, you know, number of I'm sure beautiful women, but we can't see their faces clearly. Right. But they are being regenerated. Absolutely. And they have a new identity. So if you go in Hampton Roads, you will see some of our graduates. Mm -hmm. And they are working in jobs and going to college. And you would never know. Because yeah. we say you're not defined by your past, but what you can become. Yeah. How can viewers that are with us right now dent this problem, make a difference in, in slavery? Keep, be educated about it. Recognize it. Everybody has probably seen a traffic, trafficking victim in the United States. Without even realizing Without it. even realizing it. Because so be aware of the signs. We're part of the National Trafficking Hotline, so you can do that. If you see something in your community, contact law enforcement. Yes. Because because those girls go to 7-Elevens and they go to CVS pharmacies and they buy makeup. I mean, you want to be aware. And sometimes they're looking for someone to say, can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, I'm so excited. Elizabeth, we're so excited about what you're doing. And I'm excited that Orphan's Promise has been able to come alongside of what you're doing and be supportive of it. Because not only did these women get wounded as children, but many of them have children. And if they don't get healed, families are broken apart and it just perpetrates generation after generation. So. Thank you for what you're you. doing. We so appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today and for your heart to make a difference. Find out, find out more about how you can know when you see a young girl or a woman who's troubled and how you can make a difference.